Hi, my name is Sarah Ann, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Google Scholar. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to locate scholarly articles for research, effectively target your search, save articles to your Google Scholar library, organize your saved articles, and explore related topics easily. Although as librarians, we have access to some really great subscription databases, Google Scholar is a great way to quickly search and explore a wide range of scholarly works on a specific topic, and it can be very useful as we assist library patrons in broadening or targeting their searches. Many times, an article will be available from Google Scholar with no authentication necessary to access the full text, but other times, you may have to log in to a subscription database to search for the exact article's full text. One of the reasons that Google Scholar is such a great tool for reference librarians is because of the relative ease of using Google search features and the general familiarity with Google products among many people. Google Scholar also utilizes Google search algorithms, returning relevant results easily. You can access Google Scholar by typing scholar.google.com into the address bar of an internet browser. Once there, you may notice that the layout is very similar to a basic Google search page, and many of the search techniques are quite similar. This tutorial assumes basic knowledge of Google searching techniques. Notice that if you sign in with your Google account, you can save your searches, citations, and articles for easy future reference. I'm going to start with an example of a work scenario that I recently encountered. I was looking for research on effective computer instruction methods for adults and older adults. I began my search with the phrase, Public Library Computer Classes. Notice how some of the results are pretty relevant, but they could be better with a few tweaks. By narrowing our results with a few quotation marks, we begin to see even more relevant results. Similar to many search engines and databases, we can also further target our searches by using a number of options, some of which are found here along the side. Notice right here that we are currently searching articles, but we also have the option to search case law, or to limit our search to the articles we have already saved to my library. Even more importantly, we can limit our search to only return results published in a certain time frame, using these options right here. It is very important to look at current research when researching certain topics, such as medicine, and this is a very easy way to do so. Our options here include any publication date, articles published this year, articles published since 2014, articles published since 2011, or we can get more specific by specifying a certain date range. For example, articles published after 2010 and before 2012. We can sort our results by relevance, which is the default setting, or we can sort them by their publication date, which can be very helpful if you're looking for older or newer publications. Notice how when we sort by relevance, any specified date ranges are overwritten, and when we sort by date range, the search defaults to articles published within the last year sorted by date. We can also adjust our search by specifying here whether we're searching for our keywords only in the abstracts or if we're searching for our keywords in any field, which will of course give us more results. We can get even more specific in our search by using advanced search options. To access advanced search options, you can click this drop-down menu right here and then click where it says advanced search. You can also access them at any time during your searching by clicking this arrow found right here on the search bar. 
By using advanced search options, we'll have the ability to search for keywords in a variety of different ways, including specifying certain authors or publications for articles, or again specifying certain date ranges. Notice how your results will vary depending on which of these fields you type your keywords into, and whether you're searching for your keywords anywhere in the article or in the title of the article only. These options are a great way to adjust your search if you don't find what you're looking for initially. Returning to our initial search, let's say that we found one of these results to be of particular interest to what we're looking to learn. By clicking on the title, we are taken to the page where we can access the article. In this particular case, we see that we are being prompted to purchase this article or to log in to gain access to the full text. We want to check with our library first to see if we can access this article without paying $39.95, so if we just return to our search results, we'll have the option to save this to our Google Scholar library so we can take a look at it later. To do so, we'll just click right here where it says Save. This article serves as a great launching point for our research because right here we can see that this article has been cited by 80 other articles and we can also click here to see the articles that Google Scholar thinks are related to this article. First let's take a look at which articles are citing this article. If we see any that look like they may be useful to us later, we can go ahead and save them to our Google Scholar library. As you can see, this is a great way to find more related articles on your specific topic. In doing so, we'll progressively find more current articles moving forward in time through the literature on the topic. I'm going to take us back a few pages to the first article that we found so that we can see what Google Scholar is showing as related articles. Again, if we see any that we might want to look at later, we can go ahead and save them to our Google Scholar library. By now, we've got a pretty good collection of articles saved to our Google Scholar library. We can access the Google Scholar Library by using the back button until we reach a page where we can click where it says My Library. Notice how it shows by default all of the articles in your library, but that you also have the ability to search the articles in your library by keyword using either the keywords that it remembers from your previous search or by typing in new keywords into the search bar here. Because we might use Google Scholar to find research on a number of different topics, we'll want to keep it organized, and we can do that by using labels. To do so, we'll just click right here where it says Manage Labels, and then click here to create a new label. I'm going to call this label Computer Classes. Once we've named a label, we can return to our Google Scholar library and start categorizing our articles by the labels that we've defined. To do so, click on the title of an article, and then click where it says Labels and select the label that you'd like it to be under. From here, we can also create a new label and manage existing labels. It is possible for one article to be listed under more than one label, which is very handy if the article is about more than one topic. If we return back to our Google Scholar library, we can continue our exploration by viewing citing articles and related articles for the articles that we've already selected as being relevant. We can even click where it says Cite to generate a formatted MLA, APA, or Chicago citation. This can be really handy if we know that we're going to have to access a subscription database to find the full text of an article because the citation will give us everything we need to find it. As always, with any computer-generated citation, we'll want to double-check it for accuracy. If we're using one of these citation tools listed right here, we can export the citation directly to the tool. 
for example, RefWorks. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful in explaining the different ways you can use Google Scholar in a library. Thank you so much for watching.